Hey guys, this weekend was PAX Oz, and this is what we saw. Hey guys, I'm with Dave, who is half of Power Hoof, the development team behind Crawl, an early access dungeon crawler. Yep, yep. A multiplayer competitive dungeon crawler. Okay, that's the that's the exact way. Yep. Tell us, what's the game like in short? So what's you've the game? got uh, one player controlling the the hero, and he's exploring this dungeon, and all the other players control ghosts, and they're kind of haunting the hero, following through the dungeon, and. The ghost, the objective of the ghost is to jump into traps and spawn in as monsters and try and kill the hero. And if they succeed, they get to swap places and instantly become the hero. And the hero is dead, so he becomes a ghost. And you sort of swap places and then the hero is running through the dungeon trying to kill the monsters and level up and get to level 10 and then fight this boss, which is collaboratively controlled by the, all the monsters. So it's got Legend of Zelda and Bomberman, yep. um, a bit of kind of... Diablo one -y kind of gritty kind okay, of gritty, weirdness yeah. with lots of splashes of colour. Um, yeah, more colour than that. I don't know, how's that? <laughs> that's good, that's good. I guess it's RPG, it's good base, yeah. yeah. And then a bit of, I guess, local multiplayer stuff like Nidhogg or Towerfall as well, yeah. What is Looping Ball, Michael? It's Werewolf Dodgeball in a top-down arena for two to four players. Just a fast-paced party game to play with your friends. Yeah, and these werewolves, they shoot Hadoukens and they bounce around and you've got to dodge them, yeah? Yeah, they bounce around until they hit something. So, <laughs> yeah. as more and more into the field, yeah, it becomes harder and harder to survive. One hit and you are dead for the round. What was the biggest challenge? What's been the biggest challenge so far developing Lupin Ball? Making it feel responsive, the controls. So there's a lot of techniques we use in there to make sure that the controls feel responsive. For a game this fast paced where you have to actually avoid stuff and every, you know, it's so twitchy. You need those twitch controls. Yeah, you and need I those. I felt that when I was playing, you can move very sharply, even though it's big. Yeah, that involved itself. a lot of trial and error, a lot of research, and uh, it, it seems like it worked. It paid off. I definitely played I felt it right then just from four games. Yeah. Very much so. And it's on Steam Greenlight right now? It is on Steam Greenlight right now, so please vote. And it's a game about growing a tree, right? Yeah, so you sort of it's a very zen creative game, so sort of growing this tree that then helps the, the biosphere around it. Um, and that then has another knock-on effect, so you're growing throughout all of history. Um, so you sort of it butterfly effects throughout the environment and then throughout history. So each level takes place around an important event in natural history. Um, so, so the second level that we're demoing here, you're trying to help life come out of the water for the first time. Um, and sort of going forward, you start dealing with humans and the, the, the issues and good things that come from that. Um, and sort of going through in nine levels through about 500 million years of history. You guys went over to PAX Prime, which I don't know if a lot of Australian devs do that. What was that experience like? Uh, yeah, it's really hard to do uh, just because it's such a long plane trip. Uh, it was awesome. We went into, we were in the uh, indie mega booth, so the mega booth guys are awesome. Uh, oh, all the crowds there just looking for cool little weird indie games like ours. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great experience. We managed to meet some like really cool devs, the people we look up to. I'm with Alexi, one of the developers of Sorty. What is Sorty, Alexi? So Sorty is a local multiplayer physics-based brawler. It's all about momentum and timing. Um, it's kind of like twin stick, and you use the right stick to swing your weapon. And that's how you strike your opponents, yeah. Is it local multiplayer? Yeah, local multiplayer. Okay. Of course, again, we because we are four people, we don't have the resources and you know the, the servers the, as well. The costs and the kind of technical know-how to actually run something like that online. Uh, and physics is insane. I mean, like Rocket League is the only yeah. game I know <laughs> that actually managed it really well. What's been the biggest challenge in development? Not tunnel visioning yourself into what kind of. Uh, what you strictly want to make, but rather, you know, everyone has the dream game idea, yeah. and this game is not necessarily it. Uh, so, sure. like, you gotta do what the game wants to do, and uh, that comes from like the fun. What what does it provide? What do people enjoy the most about it? And that's like the valuable piece that you have to work around. 
it's strictly player versus environment. Yeah, yeah. It's a very cooperative kind of a game, and it's all about building and working together to, to solve the big problems of the galaxy. So humanity's almost totally collapsed, is the story. We've almost gone out backwards. There's a handful of star systems left with human population on them, and um, they're just in this inner, inner sector here. And there's no government, there's starvation, there's chaos. There's, um, there's a fragment of the military still left, but they're not in control. No one's in control. I'm here with the creative director of Infotality, Rick. I don't know a huge amount about it. Is it it's still in development? Where's yeah, it at the moment? It's about five, six months into development. Um, no one can really agree on when we started it exactly. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, and it's as you can see, it's a derpy sort of physics fighter. It's more than just, you know, two wacky men punching each other. What, yeah. Like, what mechanics are in the game? Well, I mean, what's interesting about it is that it's a fighting game where the characters basically don't move. Because they're waivers, they're stuck to the floor. So okay. all of the gameplay and all of the dynamic parts of it are all about moving with the wind and that kind of crazy flailing, undulating thing. And because it's all physics-based, you end up getting quite a lot of dynamic emergent gameplay from it. Like everyone comes up with their own strategies. You can ah, see okay. that there's like some people play the low game where they just try and pin their waiver to the floor okay. and just throw the arms up and stuff. So you've really got sort of 360 degrees of movement with both sticks. Thanks guys for watching. We'll be back with our regular content next week.